situation and we got to face the fact it's not going to look pretty. And this is a trade off. You know, we say we want high paying jobs and we're in a highly competitive market. Well, if we really want that, this is something that needs to be done. Yes, there can be obviously landscape buffers. So, yeah, it's a choice. If the residents say they want jobs and to compete with these people in a highly competitive market, this probably needs to be done. If not, then fine. Realize we're not going to get these great companies coming here because they're probably going to go somewhere else. And that's fine too. But don't, you know, delude yourself into thinking that, well, I want all the vacant land to stay open natural, you know, look like, nat you know, stay natural desert. But wow, I'm going to get this high tech company to come in here when Moran and Sarita and every other place is saying, no, we give you a six month to a 12 month advantage. Um, so that's what I think we need to look at. The other thing is, anytime you stay public to any type of business, they're going to panic um, because they know the uncertainty is enormous. You look at some of our developments where they've worked for a year, a year and a half with neighborhood meeting after neighborhood meeting. That's not inducive to a company that's looking at losing millions of dollars a month. So now when we go and we say an open house is, so my first question is, are we talking about one open house or multiple open houses? Which, which is it? <laughs> one. One. And then my question is the purpose of that open house, and that's going to be the site selector owner's first question is, well, wait a minute. Do they get to veto it? Do they get to object to it? Do I have to enter into negotiations over it? No, MMA Mayor, uh, Member Solomon, the, the purpose of the open house is to provide information only. It's to uh, describe the project so the neighbors are aware of, of timelines um, and what's being built.